video. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to do a little different thing today. I'm tired of looking at jewelry for just a minute. I don't, I don't get tired very long, but I actually have a lot of jewelry I have to test here. But um, I thought I would do a handbag haul because I've been promising you a handbag haul for a while. And I do have some really nice designer bags I picked up recently. Hope I don't forget to show you any of them. Because I bring them out and then I forget what I brought out. I think they're all here. Yes. So we're going to wait for a few people to pop in. I'm going to go into a story. You won't believe what happened to me today. It's been a heck of a week. It's on, what is it, Tuesday? Oh my gosh, it feels like it's been two weeks rolled into one after today. I'm trying to calm down now. I'm trying to calm down. Because uh, there's no reason to get worked up about things, right? Stress is just not good for anybody, especially me, in my business um, of reselling, <laughs> where I have to put up with a lot, you know? I mean, we do put up with a lot, don't we? Anyway, it looks like 12 people are here. I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to see if I can get you popped out in the other window and chat with you, and I hope everything looks good. They did fix the internet. Uh, actually, they did it yesterday. Or was it Monday? Well, today, yesterday was Monday. See how I'm so confused? They fixed it yesterday. And um, I haven't tried live streaming. So I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that it doesn't get blurry and all that. So there's nothing worse than looking at a blurry video, right? I know. It's horrible. So, um, yeah. But we are going to talk handbags. I'm going to show you the designer bags I picked up all at thrift stores. Two at Goodwill. Is this one at Goodwill? Two at Goodwill and one at the... Um, was it Family Village? Family Village. Gosh. Family Thrift. Yeah, because there's Thrift Village and Family Thrift. I believe it was Family Thrift. Sorry for scratching my head. My hair was out to here, guys. It's been raining all day. It's horrible. My hair grows so fast. It's incredible. I just trimmed it myself like a week ago or two weeks ago. I don't know if you guys noticed I added some layers, but I thought I had taken some length off too, but apparently not because it's just incredible and i really do need to go to the to the hairdresser but i haven't had a chance and i need to go or i guess i'll just do it myself again because i really like having it just below the chin line so anyway looks like 20 people are here now we'll open up with my crazy story let me see if i can't pop out that chat i really wish i could pop it out right there where it says that i can pop it out let me put my rings on. I feel so naked without my rings. Um, yeah. All right, guys. Well, you know how it is at the at the post office, right? You know how tense it is, and it hasn't even gotten to Christmas, where everybody gets really tensed up, and, and the people lash out at the people that work there, and the people that work there always lash out at custom. Not always. I shouldn't say everyone. I shouldn't generalize, but... They, t they tend to have a little bit of a chip on their shoulders. I don't know why, but they didn't invent that term postal for nothing, you know? And I know it's a very, very hard place to work. They've, t they've told us about it many times. If you know any postal workers, guys, please enlighten us because I just, <sighs> I just couldn't believe what happened today, but I, I will get into it. Let me just see if I can open this chat. See, every time I come over here to open a channel, I can't. Hold on. I think that will mute me, so when I do open the chat, It'll be okay. New window. Doesn't open it for me, but whatever. I'll just open a new window and talk to you there. Hopefully. Thanks for hitting the thumbs up, guys. 33 people watching. And I'm going to say hello to a few people, and then we'll get into my story. Crazy story. Crazy day. 
Hi, Jude. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Babsy, Francis, Gloria, Nora, Violet Brown, Nadine, Valerie, Pikes Peak, Penny Pincher. Wonderful name. Paula B., Babsy. Thank you so much, guys, for being here. Uh, let me go to the top a little bit. Vanessa, hi, Vanessa. How are you? <laughs> you did too. You had a situation on Posh. Well, you know what's been happening with my posts, right? Things are getting lost like crazy. Uh, I got a package. I talked about it the other day. I think I even showed it to you. That was totally smashed in the front. It almost looked like somebody had ripped it up. But it said it was stamped and it said delivered without contents. And this was a return to me from a posher. And uh, so I still haven't been able to go claim on it. And I did take it to my post office close by here about two days ago. And they said, you can just go on the on the web uh, on the website and file a claim. And I said, well, should that be done by the buyer or the seller? She said, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Either one of you can do it. And I've already written to Posh as well. And uh, they haven't written me back. So I guess I'm going to get on the website and try to do that. So I've had that happen. I've had uh, eBay or tell me and show me the picture that said delivered delivered damage to a little uh, poly mailer that had jewelry in it and it was gone too. So uh, I think it was eBay made the buyer file a claim on that one and that got settled. I got my money back. I don't know if he got to get his money back as well, but that was so. So I'm always just really leery about the postal service, right? And um, the way they handle things, I'm very careful, especially about books, how I ship those, because I've received books, even from Amazon professional booksellers that arrive damaged because they're not properly packaged or not enough tape and so forth. And so, and then a couple of years ago, I don't know if you guys, actually someone just commented, it's a great, crazy week. Someone just commented on that video that's like four years old. And I opened up two purchases. One was from Macari when Macari was just starting and it was damaged. The bag was already damaged before it came to me though. So I took it back. And then another lady, wonderful lady had given me a fabulous deal on a Louis Vuitton. It was a two, it's about a $2,000 bag. And I think it's even more because it was retired. Anyway, because it wasn't handled correctly, it arrived damaged. It actually had a little cut on it. Tiny little cut, but it really bothered me. Someone said I was too damn picky and left that video on that on my video. And uh, I deleted the comment and I blocked her because I just don't feel like you have to make a comment like that. You know, you can criticize me and you can tell me that I'm picky, but you don't have to curse at me. I just don't think it's necessary to, to go that way, you know? And uh, so all of that happened this week. And then today I was packaging um, a Poshmark sale and I it was I put it in a box because it is a bag and I didn't want it to get mashed and I didn't want it to get, you know, stolen and whatever. So I was putting tape all around it. Now I usually get priority tape from a, another uh, post office that always lets me have a role, lets me to keep it and everything. They know I do a lot of priority shipping. And I think Margaret said that she could get hers directly from the post as well, from uh, from the website when they can mail you the mailers and all of that and you order them for free. But I haven't tried doing that, but there is some post people that let me have it. Well, these people at this other post office that's close to my house, close to my work, they're so, so picky about their tape. The last time I think she said, don't take it over there because I don't know what you're going to do with it. And I said, I'm going to go over there by the machine and tape up my stuff. I don't want to use my tape. I want to use their tape for when I don't, you know, when I don't have any, I want to have it like a, a, you know, a stash. So I use mine a little bit just to hold it down. And then I, I finish with their tape. Well, today I walk in and this lady was using the tape to tape up some stuff. So I went and asked her, can I have some more, can I have some of your priority tape? And she said, oh, it's being used. And I said, okay, is it the only, you know, it's the only role in the house? And she said, yes. So I said, okay. So I waited and waited and waited and waited. And the lady finally finished. She let me have the tape. I started taping my box. And from a distance, because I was still in the little area where you prepare your stuff, <laughs> from a distance, this lady that works at the post office tells me, that's enough. And I was like, what? And she's, I said, you're talking to me? Because she didn't even like say, hey, lady with the tape. She just, I couldn't really tell she was talking to me or what. And then she didn't really say exact words like, don't stop using the tape. So she said, that's enough. That's enough tape. And I was like, 
actually no it's not an uptake and normally i would have because they're normally typically pretty nice there with me i mean they, they're very they're very strict about their tape they're unbelievable actually so i said no it's not enough and i started lamenting about what happened with the box and how things were stolen recently and how i've received a damage really Vuitton one time because it wasn't enough tape and how the lady at my post office actually told me that the reason mine arrived the one i showed you the other time in, in the video the reason mine arrived like that was because that the sender did not put enough tape she said it probably with the handling and all of that it got it they got lost in the in the you know in the interim so okay so then she just said well yeah that's enough and you're not supposed to use it like that and i said you know what i've actually looked on your website and you can use the prior a lot of people assume that you can only use the priority tape to designate it as priority that you're not actually supposed to use it for shipping and i said no i actually looked at your website and i happen to know that you can use it for shipping that you can use it to secure the package so i'm not done with the paper i'm going to use more tape and uh, and i was really irked because normally like i said they're they're pretty nice ladies and everything but they had just gotten to my last nerve and then not too long ago at my post office this other lady that's been there she's a veteran she's absolutely i mean she's been there probably 30 years at the post office she tried to tell this lady that she could not use her flat rate box if it was bulky and that's what prompted me to go look at the website and read all of the details about that and the detail is that you can it can bulk it just has to close normally so if the envelope doesn't close normally or the box doesn't close normally then you're violating their policies but just because it's bulky or just because it's a little bit misshapen does not mean that you are not allowed to ship it priority well, she actually told this lady, no, it has to be flat and so forth and so on. That's why, oh, here's the kicker. That's why it's called flat rate, because it has to be flat. She literally said that, because it has to be flat. And the lady got so livid. I mean, she said, I'm reporting you right now. I'm going to go ship it somewhere else, and I'm reporting you right now. So I've had all of this on my mind and so forth and so on. So I told her, no, I'm not done with the tape. I think it needs more tape because I have received, not right now. Big thank you though, because I, because I just had enough. So, okay, so I'm, I keep taping, right? Well, no, that's not the end of it. There's a, a, a social, what do you call them? Social justice warrior, I guess. Somebody that decided to tell me off for stating my case about <laughs> young beautiful girl must have been in her 20s maybe 27 career girl i'm sure she trots in front of me with a beautiful little bag and she's dressed to the nines and very pretty and she turns to me and i'm not going to use the b word but she used the b word and she said you don't have to wake up every morning and be a, a witch but she did the one with the b <laughs> and this was a crowded post office but she kept walking right like she didn't expect I mean, like she expected me to say something, get confrontational with her, right? Because she was like trotting really fast with her cute little bag and all, all of that. And literally told me to my face, you don't have to wake up every morning and be a witch, but with a B. And everybody turned around and just like looked and I was like, oh my goodness, I didn't say anything. I actually, what I said was, what wonderful language you use, God bless you. I told her, may God bless you as well. Something like that. And then as she was trotting to the door, then I turned, I did turn and say, you know what? Pretty does not make you pretty. Because she was a very pretty lady, you know, probably in her 30s, like I said, late 20s. But yeah, she had the nerve to, to tell me that <laughs> when all I was doing was trying to stand up for myself. And I, you know, I get so tired of people trying to tell me that I cannot use what I need to use. And I know that these ladies have never given me their tape when I've asked them to give me tape to take home and to keep. And there's another time I went when the postmaster was there standing with all of them. And I asked him, I said, can I actually have this roll of tape? Because I have a lot more priority. He said, sure, take it. You need any more? And he told me that right in front of these three ladies who looked at me like they knew that what I was doing. They knew I was asking for it because every time I asked them for it, they never give it to me. They don't even want me to use it there in front of them. It's incredible. So I had just had it. That's my story. Sorry, I had to rant. Oh, my gosh. I just had to rant. I just get so tired of people trying to take advantage and, and make up their own rules as they go along. And, um, you know, I'm not using the tape because, because I don't want to use my tape. I mean, I, I, that's what it's there for. They're paying priority. Posh is paying priority 
rates for me to ship it priority and I'm going to ship it secure and I'm going to ship it in a big box and I'm going to use a lot of tape so that it doesn't fall out like my shoes fell out or damaged like my $2,000 Louis Vuitton that I got for 900 got damaged and I wound up never having another Louis Vuitton like that and it was a one of a kind fabulous Louis Vuitton and I lost it because of of mishandling and you know insufficient packaging anyway guys going on to handbags now let's do a little haul sorry about that rant but somebody's gonna have to listen to me <laughs> anyway the the first one i want to show you is my beautiful gucci that i got for three dollars i put it in my instagram post i did i am wearing it now i'm using it now i love it it's a classic 80s uh late 80s early 90s uh i think they called this the web pattern the g web pattern yes yeah, my husband's very good at getting <laughs> with some flirting too <laughs> good point the crazy card mike there yes i mean it's crazy and that's what uh, that's why that gentleman just gave it to me he's like sure do you need any more and they're like oh it's tape it's our tape we can only let you have one and one customer at a time and you can wait and incredible i had just had it so i guess i i had an attitude when i was answering her and telling her that the other lady felt like she had to defend them she didn't know the whole story but whatever anyway so this is a fabulous bag guys it is a very very sought after pattern i love it because of the green the classic green striping on there it's got the little double g there three dollars guys i think i still have the tag in here because i like to keep the tags when I find such a bargain, I actually leave it with a little tag inside. I may have put it back in the zipper. Now, one thing you, here it is. One thing you will know, and I will give you a little tip on the, on authenticating these bags, $3.73 at Valley Village. Incredible, incredible score, yes. Now, it did have a tiny little ink. I think, I don't know if it was transfer or ink, but it's right there. You can barely see it. You could see it a lot more when I posted it in my little mini video that I did on, on Instagram right here in the corner, but I cleaned it really well with, um, a soap mixture, some face wash and some soft soap, mixed it up with some water, used a little toothbrush all around it. I did the band as well, the green band. It came out really, really good. What I was really happy about is that the piping is still perfect. Because I've run into Gucci's and they've been very, very worn. It's usually at the thrift store, they're very worn here. I once found a gorgeous, huge suitcase, but the piping was gone. So I just, and they wanted like $99 for it. It was years ago. So I didn't go for that one, but this one cleaned up so nicely. And this was actually kind of um, kind of dulled with the dirt. So I managed to get all of that nice and clean. I love it. It's a perfect, perfect size. A lot of things are in here. I'll show you in just a minute. And uh, so, I mean, I did, I sized down with a few things. I still have my, my wallet. I still have my, my case. My phone fits perfect. I took out one of the other cards, and I'm using this one right now, this little Brighton that just holds two cards and my rosary in there. So everything else is perfectly fine. What One thing you will find, though, about these vintage bags is this, what Louis Vuitton calls it a lantra, I believe, but it's like an ultra suede, and they peel they 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 uh they get powdery from the from peeling because of the age and a lot of the louis vuittons have the imitation leather that also peels but this was not i was not going to leave it behind regardless what i did was wash it i pulled it all out and i washed it just like i was shampooing hair or something and you wouldn't believe all of the color that fell out of it it was it was a little bit darker i mean i guess it, it kind of stayed the same color but I guess it was just all of the the residue or whatever it is that, that makes it peel from age. So whenever you do find one, you'll know that that's what you're going to find and that, you know, it may trouble you. You might be able to clean it. I cleaned mine. It came out great. Zippers are still fine. And then, of course, they used to even make their tags so much nicer. This is such a beautiful leather there. This one has the uh, serial number on the front. But most Gucci's, the traditional or the more contemporary ones today, have the serial number in the back. 
of the tag, but this one has it both. And then it also has, um, I think it says anniversary, no, accessory collection. And this is kind of a, it feels like like money, like the, the same material that they make dollar bills out of, kind of a papery fabric. I hope you can see that. I'm not sure if you can see it. But uh, yeah, it says accessory collection made in Italy. Gucci has the number and it's not torn or anything. So I think it came out beautiful. So that's what's in it. I got my Kleenex, I got my checks, my phone. Everything fits in here fine. I didn't really have to change much. My card holder, I even have lotion. Uh, I did find this too. So this is another score for $2. And I decided to keep it, though I don't really like contemporary Dunies. This is actually probably from the 90s, though. It's not that contemporary. But it's got a nice little, almost like a travel poster sticker there. You know, the little stickers you get when you're on your trunks or whatever. But it was brand new. And I thought I would replace my big Louis Vuitton uh, Papillon pouch because it was going to take up more room in here. So I decided to keep it instead of selling it. And in here is where I have my keys, uh, a little glass cleaner. I have a lipstick. And I have a loop <laughs> for the treasure hunt. And I have all of my loyalty cards here as well. This was brand new. It has absolutely no nowhere at all. Where did I find this? It was at the Goodwill, but it was in the oddest place. I think it was in the toys. I think that's, I can't even take my cards out. Why are they stuck? Okay, there they go. My loyalty cards. Look how brand new, not even worn. See, it's still got the price, $2. Little duty. So I decided to use this one instead of the Papillon while I use this bag because it is so, um, you know, it's constricted a bit. And that Papillon was going to take up a little bit more room. And this is really cute. And I have to carry my keys with me. You know, it's a keyless entry or whatever. So it's perfect for all of this. I got that. Put this away and I'll show you the rest. So that was a really little impromptu what's in my bag, guys. So... Let me see who's in here. Tammy, thank you for being here. Carly Q, Princess Casserole. Hi, how are you, Carla? And Ansley, thank you for being here. Okay, we're going to move on to some more. Purses, yes, I love the Gucci. It's fabulous. I know I could probably sell that for no less than 200 if I wanted to, but I have wanted the green and red classic striped Gucci for a long, long time. I had a Gucci a few years ago. I bought it directly from, um, at that time the store was called Foley's. It's now a Macy's because Gucci used to have a salon inside of Foley's, which was now, which is now Macy's. That was in the, in the late eighties. They used to have their sell the salons inside of Macy's and, and well, it was Foley's then. I had a really pretty one. They actually called it a camera case, and it was, but it was not in that pattern. It was in another pattern. It was beige, really, really cute. And one day my cousins were visiting, and uh, these are my country cousins. And anyway, my mother made me give my Gucci to my cousin. Don't ask me how my mother makes me do things, but she does. Because my cousins give me a lot of things too. Believe me, they're very generous. So anyway, we got in a conversation, and they liked my Gucci, and I gave it to them. <laughs> So I haven't had a Gucci except for that little weekender bag as well. I, mean, I don't know if you guys saw that, that I got on Posh and resold on, did I resell it on Macari? I resold it on Macari for about $100 more. So I made a profit on it. It's pretty good. All right. So that's one bag. Then I got this beautiful fossil wallet. This is the prettiest green. Brand new as well. Posh as soon as I can. I haven't been able to do much listing on, on handbags. I've been doing a lot of jewelry. But it's a very pretty pebbly leather. Again, brand new. It's still got the tag, guys. What does it say? $48? $37.50. Still tagged. Still got all of the little slot, you know, sample cards or whatever in there. Very, very nice. And what did I pay for this? I think I paid about $3 for it at the Goodwill. Really cute. Excellent. I just don't like these zip-around wallets myself. 
because ever since I got that little Elise wallet, that's I'm just stuck on that. I'm trying to, you know, scale down at least on the weight of my bags, even if I don't always get a, um, a you know, a small bag. I, I like to keep the wallet small because these things can weigh. But people love these. People really do love their little, oh, that's got a nice smooth zipper. Fossil makes a really good bag, really good handbags. So I got that. Okay. And then let me show you the other Gucci I got. Now this Gucci I got at the Goodwill. And this one I paid up for. <laughs> I showed Vanessa a picture of it when I found it at the Goodwill. And I was so happy to find it too. This one has not even been cleaned yet. And it still looks pretty good. Um, for $14. It was hanging on the rack. It wasn't even in the back like they normally do at uh, some of the Goodwills, they put some of their better bags like back in, in the back behind their glass cases or whatever. But it was a Sunday, so I didn't get any kind of a discount. And I told her I paid full price for it. And she laughed. <laughs> She's like, yeah, full price at the Goodwill. <laughs> so it's 14. Really nice. Also the little web pattern, but it's canvas or not canvas, but fabric, leather trim. It says Gucci there. In gold, it's really a nice bag too. I like it too because it's very lightweight and some gold hardware. It's got a really pretty little fob here. I guess you can hang some keys or something there. I don't know. And uh, the lining was still very nice too, nice and clean. This really didn't look very well at all, used at all. But we have bubbles in here, pillows in here. And, but it is a little bit of an old, I think this is more like from the 80s because it has a cell phone bag, a cell phone slot here, but it's a little tiny one. Really small black lining. What is this? Was it $12.99? That might have been from, so I thought it was $14, but this one says $12.99. Anyway, and then let's look at the tag here, guys, so you can see as well. These are the more contemporary tags and this one will have the number in the back as well i don't think it has it in the front at all no it just says gucci and made in italy in the front and then you'll find the number the serial number whatever it's called the id in the back there very very nice condition as well very nice lining really thick very clean very, very clean. I was thrilled. I could not believe it. Especially the fact that I found it right there hanging on a rack on a Sunday. When at somebody, maybe they had just taken it out because I'm, you know, Saturdays are so crowded. Sunday is not that crowded. Love it though. Really, really pretty. And it's a perfect shoulder bag. Oh, another thing I was going to say about this one is that back in the 80s, early 90s, they didn't really make the crossbody. So this is really a shoulder strap. And it will do a crossbody, but it'll be kind of short, which I kind of like anyway. It really makes it more comfortable. So, see, it kind of stays right there. I really like that. There is a little bit of wear on the strap, like right here. Somebody had it even shorter. So it's really just like a little dent, you know, that the buckle will leave. But no major scragglies or cracks or anything on that Gucci. Really nice. And you, you know, you reckon there's something about the Gucci leather that I recognized it from when I, I dig, I did dig this out of a bin, pretty much a bin piled with all kinds of garbage. And uh, I saw the leather strap sticking out. I was like, that's Gucci leather. You can just tell it's almost got like a tobacco color or something. It's very distinct. It's a very distinct color. So that's that one. Okay. Any questions, guys? If you do have questions for me, highlight my name or put it in caps or put a bunch of, what do you call it, question marks before and after. I'll scroll through the chats because I usually wind up missing some of your questions and I don't want to do that. Oh, thanks, Jude. You should go shopping with me. <laughs> I should go to, to Maine. I want to travel the U.S. Thank you, Mike. I get lucky sometimes. I get. I just haven't had that much luck with, with Gucci lately. <laughs> Why are you on the floor? 
Why are you on the floor, Angela? Did I make you laugh with my rant about the post office? Gosh almighty, I didn't want to lose it, but I did. I mean, I wasn't yelling, but I was just letting them know. I was so tired of just holding it in and holding it in that they're always telling you what to do with that tape. <laughs> All right, don't see any questions so far, but let me scroll back a little bit more. Oh my goodness. Okay, there's more guys. I, I got a Prada and um, another one to show you. And I'll show you how to find it because they, they do fake Prada a lot. And uh, but you can tell when you pick them up, you know, you can see that they're not quality. Everything about them is cheap. It feels cheap. But even the lining, if they can't even, you know, do a good lining, you know, it's fake. Prada's not going to do that. Gucci's not going to do that. Even Kate Spade and all of those are not going to, you know, scrimp with cheap materials. All right. I don't think I, if I missed your question, guys, would you repost it and highlight my name or something? What a beautiful clear stream. Finally. Good. I'm so happy. Thank you for letting me know, Ansley. It should be beautiful because it's $10 extra a month. <laughs> but it's worth it, I think, because I don't like to watch blurry videos myself. And I really appreciate you guys hanging in there with me, even with the blurry stuff. OK, this is a cute bag. I always like to get bags that to me are unique and quality i felt the little leather strap i i touched it i knew it was leather and i opened it and it's it's got sort of a almost like a little stage coach i have it stuffed with jewelry like i always stuff things with jewelry <laughs> actually the reason this is stuffed with jewelry is because these are earrings that i was going to list the other night and i don't know what happened i didn't finish listing all of them so these are all paired earrings in here they were all on my bed spread out ready for me to take pictures and then i was like oh i gotta go to bed i'm so tired so i just scooped them all up into this bag but look how pretty the shape the silhouette of this is so pretty it's like a brocade it does have a zipper as well and this is handmade here in boulder colorado maruka maruka is what it says boulder colorado so I just thought that was really unique. This this type of stuff always attracts my attention because I feel like it may have a following. It may have a cult following or something. And then the style is just so intriguing and so pretty. It's a crossbody, a nice long crossbody. Just a really pretty bag, you know, that and it's not everyone wants to buy logos. Not everybody wants the designer people love your simple little crossbody but quality again this is leather this is a beautiful brocade feels like i'm sitting on a on a pretty sofa or something when i touch it it's just gorgeous so i got that one and i think i paid about two dollars for this one i normally don't pay very much i think the most i've ever paid for bags that are like brand new with tags is maybe forty dollars and they're usually italian designers that even if i haven't heard of them if i know it's an italian designer well-made bag i'm buying it and i resell it okay here's a cute bag this one i paid up a little bit for it's uh 12 but i got it for half price that day because it was red tags it's red tags this week too i need to get back look how cute this is full leather bag i love fringe fringe never goes out of style and you know what i figured when i was looking at the price because it's still high right i figured i couldn't even buy for six dollars i couldn't even buy a strap and people are switching their straps around, guys. Like they'll do, the, excuse me, they're do their plain leather bags, black or whatever, and they'll put a cute little strap on it to switch it up. Look how pretty that strap is. Leather with whip stitching, just gorgeous. And this is a brand new bag, nowhere, nothing on it. Let me tell you the brand. As soon as oh, this is a zipper back. This, you know, what's really nice about it too is that you can almost wear this as a fanny bag, fanny pack, because of the closures that it has. The hardware, you can take it apart, wrap it around, and it could be a little side panel bag. Look at that beautiful beadwork there in the front. Isn't that gorgeous? This was also Goodwill. I haven't gone to the Goodwill all week, guys. Trying to be good. Trying to be good really the kate spade straps cost well the louis vuitton straps cost that's one of the reasons i sold my big 50 uh my what was it called a carry-on 
That was one of the reasons I sold it because I could never find a reasonably priced strap. And even then, I know it was going to kill me. It's just so heavy. I load it up and it was, I had to handle it just with the two handles. So I, and the, every time I wanted to buy a strap, it, uh, I think they're $200, $300. I think they were $200 when I bought it from the store. And then now they're even more. Here's the brand. Now they're e Tribe America. Now they're even more on the second market. They're, they're not cheap at all. So, yeah, straps are super expensive. This is a beautiful, beautiful bag. Yeah, it's $12.99. Here's another tag. That's one thing Goodwill loves to do. It's funny because they had a boutique and they had red, but they let me have the red. Because the boutique only goes on sale on Saturdays. I think it's 30% off. Isn't that a pretty crossbody bag? I love it. Okay, here's another brand. I don't know if the, if the, what do you call it? Is it iron? If the iron is still hot on this one, but this was a very sought after bag. And, and it's um, a few years ago, actually, maybe four or five years ago. This was 14 and I got it also for half price. It's the Toki Doki by La Sport Sack. So these characters, these Japanese characters, were the ones. It depends on the pattern with these bags, guys, because they have all kinds of patterns. It's a nice crossbody, too. But this is that Japanese Toki Doki, I think it's called. And look, it's got a little, um, it's got the rainbow zippers. Super cute. This is a beautiful pattern, and it is a new bag, too. So I'm hoping it'll still be garnering some interest for those people that are diehards, diehard fans. This has got a really, really cute, almost, uh, I don't know, it's just, it's an anime, I don't know what it's called, That the trend from Japan. So cute with dogs and huskies and giraffes, and it's got everything on it. Cute bag. Okay, I got that one. And uh, let me check the chat again before I show you the last two and uh, see if you have any questions. Thank you. I'm glad you like that bag, Karen. At Karen's at the beach. I'm going to try to do Dwayne's auction, hopefully before the end of the year. I'll be putting some of these bags up for auction, guys, so I hope you all join me. Let's see if he has room. I haven't checked because I know he's booked a few shows already. Yeah, definitely a hippie bag. I, I love fringe, though. Fringe does not go out of style. I do not leave it behind. Not leather, anyway. Remember that one I showed you not too long ago in my handbag haul? I sold that one, and someone just inquired about it on eBay. She's like, did you sell it? Yes. Because I kept relisting it. I think I, I had it for originally $400. I, I paid $4 for it. And I think I had it as high as 400 and I think I wound up taking 300 for it. But it was a beautiful bag. I don't even remember the brand. Brand new as well. Really fabulous. How do you ex clean the expensive purses? Well, I just talked a little while ago, Maria, about how I cleaned the Gucci. I cleaned it with a toothbrush. I cleaned it with a solution of soft soap and uh, Faisal, not Faisal Derm, but that other one, Faisal Hex or whatever it is. that I, It's a daily face wash. I squeeze that, pump that into a little dish, got some suds on it, scrubbed it really well with a toothbrush, rinsed it. And then after I did that, then I did the lining. And like I said, all of that, that like, I don't know, I guess residue because it gets kind of powdery. It's so strange. It gets kind of powder, but that's going to happen. That's a, a, what is it, a 30-year-old bag? Oh, my daughters came up with a new moniker for it. She saw it yesterday. My middle daughter came to pick up her dog because she was in San Diego on vacation and my bag was there on my bed. She said, oh, is that Grandma's Gucci? I was like, that's what that's the key word I'm going to use, guys. Now that's going to sell it. Grandma's Gucci. Amen. Uh, but yeah, I just use, and Tammy over there, Tam's place. She's got some great videos, guys. Go check her out. She's got some great videos on cleaning the linings and her little coach bags. And uh, go check that out. And again, like I did the lining, I, I used the same soap, but I scrubbed it and scrubbed it and I squeezed it and got all that color that was running from it out. Then I hung it with the lining flat on a towel so that it wouldn't go against the body of the bag because I have made the mistake of cleaning. I think it was a Marc Jacobs or something. It had a horrible lining. This is why I don't like to do unless it's a really worthy bag. 
and it had some color transfer. So you have to be very careful because it can, if especially if it's black leather, it can transfer back into the lining. So that's what I was afraid of. I laid it all down flat and then I even dried it with my blow dryer so that it wouldn't have, you know, that moisture all around it. I dried the lining. I went in there and dried it all off as best as I could for probably 10 or 15 minutes. And then after I did that, I put one of those, what is that Turby twist towel that, that they sell for drying your hair really quick? I stuffed the bag with that overnight just in case there was any extra moisture that needed to be picked up. Then I took it out the next day and it was perfect and it has not had that powdery feel at all anymore. I'm going to read a little bit of the chat. Y'all tell me if you have any questions I missed. Repost them. Can you check two young ladies have a bag brand? Diana Ross. Really? I don't think I've ever heard of them, but share it in the chat or come back in the comments and put that there. I'd love to see uh, cottage industries thrive. I think they make amazing things. They really do. Yeah. So that's what I did. But do check out Tammy's channel on cleaning handbags. She's got some very, very good tips. How do I ship my bags? Well, we just talked about how <laughs> I tried to ship it today. Tried to ship that bag uh, very securely, I hope. Uh, if it's a foldable bag, you know, like that Toki Doki one. I'll I'll put it in a mailer. I'll wrap it usually with uh, a plastic, so in case it gets wet, I like to do that, and um, and then put it in a mailer. But you know, lately with things that I've done, I've accidentally slashed jewelry, if you can believe it or not, by cutting it. And I've kind of learned my lesson that if Posh is going to foot the bill for the shipping, I'm going to put it in a box. I'm going to just try to make it more you know, secure that way. I'm not paying extra for it. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm really not going to scrimp on it, especially if it's something really expensive like that. Do you sell fossil or relic bags? Are they worth buying? Fossil is, in, and it's not as much as you think. I wouldn't go over $10 on a fossil bag because I probably will, may not make 40 if, you know, it depends on which one it is. I have a really pretty doctor bag that I think I could probably sell for about 40 but I only paid two or three dollars for it. So you really got to think about that, Cindy. Relic, no. Relic is uh, is not a, a. It's I think it's half leather. I don't, even, I don't even know if it's full leather. But I don't touch relic. I don't touch the Tijanello anymore because their straps are are not leather. I don't like to explain to my customer, potential customer, that only half of the bag is leather. So I don't touch them anymore. I still gravitate towards the vintage coach. I love those. Guys, it looks like 40 people haven't put a thumbs up yet. I hope that you do that before you leave or when you walk in. And don't forget to subscribe if you're new to the channel. We do to talk a lot about reselling here. I love all things glamour and luxe, especially when we can get them at discount prices and uh, either use and love them ourselves or resell them. So you'll learn a lot about that and you'll see what I find at the Goodwill and thrift stores here in Houston where I live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. I like to go live kind of randomly because my schedule is a little off. I am a full-time uh, school teacher, so I just come on when I can. And um, so the rest of you guys, I really appreciate your thumbs up. Thank you, Tammy. Okay, we're not done with designers, guys. Look at this cute Prada. This is the second Prada I find in the wild. The other one my daughter has, and it's a beautiful, um, it's a beautiful messenger bag. This is a little bucket, mini bucket bag, and I don't think it actually came with straps. It may have, because I don't see where they would hook on. But that it's very possible that it could have come with another strap. But uh, the first thing I checked on the product was, because the fake ones always have the logo, the logo stapled. You'll see two little clips on it. You'll lift it like that. You can actually see the little clip come up. So that's the first thing I checked. Then I checked the the quality of the the can. I don't even know. This is nylon. This is like what put them on the map. Remember a couple of years ago in the '90s, they had the nylon bags that everybody had with the beautiful chains. And so this is the fabric that put them on the map. They love to do this. Another thing you'll notice on the Prada logo. Look at that R. The R is supposed to have like a little bow, almost like the R is curled. So look for that on your Prada logo, otherwise it's fake. If you even have to go that far, because sometimes you can just throw it down as soon as you touch it. You can tell it's not a good, a good fabric. This is like a nylon 
washable fabric. You can't throw it in the laundry, but you, you know, you can just surface clean it. So that was the first thing I looked for. It's got a very nice smooth zipper, leather trim on the zippers. The one I got my, my daughter had rubber zippers and it had the product in red. A really nice uh, pocket here in the front, just a little mini pocket. Now let me show you the lining as well. This one has sort of metallic leather trim. And then I looked at this patent leather and it is real leather. And I knew a fake would not bother with real leather. Very nice rivets as well. And this one still has the tag, which is good because I didn't remember what I paid for. $2.92. Not at the Goodwill, guys. This was the uh, Value Village, I believe. What did I say? No, not Value Village. Family Thrift. Family Thrift. $2.92. Love it. I'm going to leave it on. Leave it on for now. Let me take off, take out the beads I had in there and show you the lining. I don't think it's, okay, the lining is tacked. So I'll have to kind of like turn it inside out. Okay, and it also has a very nice knot stapled. The other cheapy imitations, you'll lift it right here. It'll have two little staples coming right out, just ready to come out. This is nice and secure. It's actually got a backing on it to hold it really nicely. So it does have the logo inside, the name label as well. And then look at the lining. The lining says Prada all around it with sort of a, and it also has the inspection number tag here. This 35 on it. And look at the lining. The cheap ones, you can feel how thin they are. The, this one is not. And it has like a little pattern all around it. And then it says Prada all around it. It looks on one side, it's upside down. On the other side, it's not. So I don't know if you can see them. I'll try to hold it a little bit longer for you. But just the quality of this lining, I've seen the fakes, they're so thin, they feel like oh, they feel like cheap scarves or something. Like it wouldn't hold up, you know, a month. This is really nice and thick lining. So you could tell pretty quickly that it is genuine. And it says Prada made in Italy right there. Really, really cool little bag. I will possibly put this up at um I haven't showed it to my daughter, but she doesn't need it. I already gave her one Prada, right? She can't have them all. She cannot have them all. i got to make some money. I want to go to Chicago next month for my grandson's christening. All right, then this one, guys. I saw this from a distance, and it reminded me of the Birkin bag, which I actually do like the Birkin bag. I just don't like the belt. I feel like it would be a lot of trouble, and I would never be able to afford it. But I saw the style of it, and I was like, that looks like an expensive bag. Even from where I was, it almost looked like that, what they call pony hair, that calf leather that they call pony hair because they, you know, they, they put cow print on it and sometimes it's brown and white and whatnot, but it's not, it's just a really rich, beautiful leather and it's a long shawl. I've been having a lot of good luck with long shawl in their, in their other styles. And look at this beautiful tote. It's not even heavy. It's so cute. Oh, and it staples. I mean, it staples. It snaps right there on the sides. So you can give it some nice little trim silhouette. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I can't even describe this leather. It's like a suede. It feels like a suede, but then it's got the grain that looks like fur, but it's not. And then you can see the, the Long Shop logo there, which is the little horse. Horse and rider there. I hope you can see it. I can't see the screen. <laughs> so I'm just hoping you can see it. I'll try to hold it a little bit longer. Steady there. Yeah, it reminded me very much of the Birkin bag, the, the huge bag that all the rich ladies carry. Because <laughs> the, the some people get the small one because the, the big ones are fifty thousand dollars, I think. But the style is so cute. And then it's got a big pocket in the back with uh, a snap and it is pristine believe it or not this is a pristine bag i love the way it opens too it's got an interesting little lock there rich men carry them too <laughs> yeah 
yeah, I watch this guy on YouTube. He loves his his Birkins. A couple of guys I watch. I love to see their hauls. But I love Longchamp. I have found that. Um, I don't know if you saw my last handbag haul. I showed you the uh, that was like a little briefcase, like a little mini briefcase. It was so cute. Yeah, this is super cute. I love the silver hardware. Uh, I love the little snap, the way it closes there. And wait till you see the inside. It's pristine. It's lying. Okay, here's the price. God, I still can't believe it. And it still has. No, well, I stuffed it. <laughs> I was going to say, it still has the paper, but this is a Goodwill bag. I stuffed it with my thrift store bags. $8. And I may have gotten 30% off that day because I usually get the 30% off every day. So I possibly paid $5 for this. Longchamp, all leather bag. Amazing. Look at the inside. It's like a plastic, a really nice, thick durable plastic this is a travel tote basically a book bag or a travel tote it's got a key fob there too attach fob this is an amazing bag truly amazing i have not checked the comps on it i haven't even checked the comps on the other leather longchamp i got that really cute mini briefcase which is perfect for like a, a mac air so yeah it's got two big pockets it's got the little fob there it's not is it leather yeah yeah, this is leather. The little key fob is leather. Love this bag. And it's really lightweight for it to be all leather. Leather handles. Long shop name. This was just an overlooked, you know. They have, sometimes they have these bags like from... I don't know, like from Target, but they're really cute. They have them in the back, like they're really expensive bags. And they let these go because you can't even see that really faint logo there. But there it is. I hope you guys can see it. It's just kind of embossed there. Excellent condition. Excellent, excellent condition. So I think that is it for the, the haul of as far as the bags. If you have any questions? Comments, let me know. I really appreciate it. Oh, how sweet, Jill. That was very nice of Sandy to give you that. She's the best. She's amazing. I have to show you the, the bracelet that she sent me with my last purchase as well. It's so cute. I'm going to have a little bit of a haul probably tomorrow because I'm going to open another James Avery purchase that I made on Posh. Super cute, and I want to show you that probably tomorrow um but i think i have a recorded video of a of a big big bag that see the thing is when i record those and then i edit them which is great because i don't want to burden you with all the untangling and all of that but it still winds up being like a 30 minute video and it takes forever for maybe now it won't take forever with the new internet though i'm just thinking about that maybe it'll go faster it takes like four hours to get it to upload. It's incredible. Bambi, thank you for being here. I'm just going to stroll through the chat, guys, see if I don't see any other. Does Longchamp have an inside label? Let me check on this one. Uh, I know the other ones, you know, those little, uh, and I have one of those too, the ones that, that are foldable for travel. I don't believe that one has it. But there was telltale signs for that too. If you guys ever run into those, the ones that are foldable and they're like plastic and then they're leather trim and you fold them up and they come in different sizes, forget what they're called, um, collage or something like that. That one, remember that the thread on the outside of the label is a different color from the one on the inside. One of the ladies told me that at one of the stores because I had never noticed. This one does not have any kind of label on the inside at all. And I'm not sure. I think the other one is vintage too, and I don't think it does either. I love the way this. Snaps. So, oh look, it does have a label. Thank you for reminding me, Harley Grand. Now I can look in here. This one has something on the side. I don't know if I'll be able to see it. It has a leather label. Here it is. Yeah, and it says "Made in France, Longchamp." Let me see if I can bring it up. 
so you can see it. Can you see it there? Right inside there. Yeah. But I don't know about those other ones. I, I've never noticed. But this one's right there. Can you guys see it? There it is. Yeah. It says made in France, Longchamp, and does it have a logo again? Yeah. It's a circle. It made in France. Then it says something on the bottom. Maybe it's a serial number. But it has the horse and rider inside of a little circle on a leather tab. But, again, with the other ones that we normally see at the thrift stores, guys, I've, I've run into them. I've detected the fake ones because someone gave me a tip. And the, the most important one that's so obvious, especially when you see them listed on Poshmark or anywhere, ask them to see the bottom, the inside of the, the little flat because it'll be a different color of thread and it will stand out quite obviously it'll be a dark brown whatever it may be because you know that leather i think is all the same color but the inside will be lighter and that's one of the telltale things they do in order to deter you know some of that counterfeiting that goes on <laughs> long champ like champion yeah i learned how to say how did, i used to say long champ uh but someone showed me that it was long champ so, yeah, long shot. Uh, let me see if I see any more questions. Thank you so much, Harley Grant. I love it, too. I think it's so cute. I'm going to research the price. Um, but it's a cute bag. It's, like, so perfect to travel with. That's, what I, that's how I managed to cut down and use the little, um, the little messenger. I'm putting a lot of my things in my, um, is it Laura USA, which is kind of similar to Coach. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that brand, but it's a very, very nice brand too. And I have a briefcase that I got from a my late friend who passed. Uh, her husband sold some of her things. He just didn't want, want to have any of her things at the house. And I picked that up and I have a whole story and a whole video on it if you want to watch it. But that's what I use for work. And I put my all my other essentials in there, like my lunch, my lunch, my my makeup bag, all of that's going in there. And that way I manage to carry a, a small bag. I mean, there's no reason for me to lug around a makeup bag. Well, I put my makeup on once, then maybe I'll put lipstick on during the day, but that's it. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Tammy. I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down unless I see a question. Let me just roll through here really quick. How do you all say, oh, it's not Da Vinci. It's not a hard G. Yeah, it's Givenchy. 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 Yeah, not a hard G at all. And it's Ralph Lauren, not Ralph Lauren, while we're talking. Because he was actually, he took his name from Lauren Bacall. His his last name is, is it Schitzmitz or Schmitzitz or something like that? It's a very interesting name, very ethnic name, and he dropped it. And his favorite actress was Lauren Bacall. So he named his company, he renamed himself, actually took that name, after her in honor of her. And when he gave her an Oscar, he mentioned that, and he's talked about it in a lot of documentaries. But it's not Ralph Lauren, it's Ralph Lauren as well. Yeah. <laughs> I always look on YouTube, too. There's a lot of things I don't know how to pronounce and i want to pronounce them correctly lancome and all that stuff and you know but we'll pronounce it in an english way sometimes anyway that just happens <laughs> yeah sandy i'm so glad you're here have a good night i'm so glad you're here as well i hope you're doing well let me see debs is here babsy thanks guys i appreciate all of y'all i don't think i saw anything highlighted or in caps that I mispronounced, but if you do have any other questions, post them in this video. And then when I start another handbag haul, I'll start with those questions. I can always address them soon. Okay, Birkin is makes me think of sex in the city. Yeah, definitely. That and the what are those shoes they used to sport? The Manalo Blonic, Manalo, Manalo Blonic. Yeah. I love that show. It was kind of crazy, but I, I did not miss it when I had HBO. I don't have HBO. Don't have cable anymore. 
All right. So, guys, I guess I don't see any more questions. Uh, Darlene, thank you for being here. Gabby B., I just want to say hello to everyone, if I can. Layla. Do you, and then, yeah, I think that was it, guys. So have a great night. I'm going to let you go. I think I've gotten over my stress, my post office issue. Um, I'm going to still go to that post office. I have to go to that post office because I get out at 4. By the time I get home, I barely make it to my post office at 6. I want to start saving my Saturdays for other things and not have to rush to go, you know, to go ship. So either way, I got to go to that post office, even though they're not very nice. And we'll get over it. You know, what can we do? We just got to get over it. Hopefully no one else will interfere and think they're saving the world by calling me a witch with a B. All right. So y'all have a great night, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Hit the thumbs up before you go, okay? Good night.